Good morning. Thank you for attending this presentation. My name is Angel Molina. I am a PhD student at the Volvo Cars and Chalmers University in Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, I am working with Professor Paolo Falcone, who is affiliated to Chalmers University and University of Modena. And the work I will present today is titled uh, Modeling and Control of Test Scenarios for Validation of Autonomous Driving Functions. But first, I would like to describe a motivating example, a traffic scenario. So we are focusing on complex traffic scenarios that are not uh, frequently found in public roads or scenarios that are uh, dangerous to test in public roads. So in this figure, we have a test scenario designed to validate uh, an autonomous overtaking function of a certain vehicle uh, under test, the, the vehicle in red. And this uh, VUT is driving on a two-way highway road, and there are two uh, test targets on the road, uh, test target one in blue and target two in green. So in this scenario, the vehicle under test will attempt to overtake um, target one, and at the same time, target two is driving on the opposite lane towards the VUT. Uh, but when the overtake is uh, happening, uh, target one will try to block the overtake by speeding up and catching up with, uh, with the vehicle under test. And since there is a uh, target two driving in, on the opposite lane, the vehicle under test has a limited amount of time to either complete or abort the overtake. So uh, we assume that the motion of the VUT is controlled uh, externally, or the motion is not controlled by the agent controlling targets one and two. And we assume that the motion of the VUT or the future motion of the VUT is unknown to the controller that is coordinating the two test targets. So it would be difficult to control the test targets using fixed reference trajectories because of the unknown motion of the VUT. Uh, so we need a modeling framework that is capable of describing a wide variety of test scenarios. And for that, we chose hybrid systems and we're focusing in particular on switching systems. So how do we model a test scenario um, through switch systems? Well, uh, first of all, a switch system combines discrete and continuous states. And in this case, the discrete state Q is associated to the operating modes or stages in the scenario, and it takes value in some set Q. So there are NQ different uh, operating modes. And then the continuous state uh, X describes the motion of the VUT and the other vehicles, and is described by some uh, function F. Uh, so the dynamics of the continuous state depend on the uh, state X, the a certain control input U, and a disturbance W. And the disturbance is uh, introduced to model the, the unknown uh, future motion of the vehicle under test. And uh, we have some additional specifications that uh, shape the test scenario. So we have sets of admissible states and inputs to represent uh, actuator constraints and possibly safety constraints. We have bounds on the unknown disturbance that we assume to be bounded and measurable, uh, but future, future values remain unknown to the controller. And the control objective of the test scenario is um, specified as entering or making the continuous state X reach or enter certain uh, goal sets, uh, capital XG, for the different operating modes in the scenario. And all of these uh, sets are assumed to be mode dependent. So the, the sets are specified by the current operating mode uh, Q. And we're focusing on a subtype of switch systems, uh, systems that look like, like this graph, where the discrete state Q increases monotonically uh, from one to two all the way to the last uh, operating mode in Q. And the switches occur uh, based on the state. When the continuous state X enters the goal set, then a, a switching occurs between two consecutive operating modes. Okay, so uh, the problem that we're addressing can be stated as follows. We want to determine an admissible control input that will make the discrete state Q evolve uh, sequentially in finite time uh, as one, two, three, until the last uh, operating mode in Q, while satisfying the mode dependent state constraints and input constraints for all possible sequences of the bounded disturbance W. Uh, and also, it's important to mention that there is no fixed uh, reference trajectory for the motion of the test targets or for the motion of the VUT. So this is not a reference tracking problem, and it is also not a stabilization problem. Instead, we are dealing with a problem of finite time entry into, uh, into sets, subject to constraints and disturbances. Okay, so this figure illustrates the control, uh, the, the approach that we propose to, to solve this problem. So uh, in this, uh, Figure we have the continuous state space, uh, and these squares here represent um, the admissible, the sets of admissible states for for our switch system 
that in this case has three operating modes. Uh, and the small uh, square, red squares represent the goal sets for, for each of the operating modes. And as we see, we have these ovals here that represent sets of feasible states for, for this problem, uh, which are sets that can be robustly controlled to reach uh, the corresponding operating, uh, the corresponding goal set for the operating mode. So the idea is to control the <clears throat> continuous state X from some initial condition, uh, control it to reach uh, the goal set for the first mode, and from then make it reach the goal for the second mode and so on, while keeping the state inside sets of feasible states. But now the question becomes, how uh, do we know if there exists such a feasible states? And if there exists, how do we uh, determine the sets? Well, for that, we uh, perform, perform a feasibility analysis based on backward reachability. And we borrow the concept of robust controllable sets. So the, the intuition behind this concept is uh, for a certain goal set uh, XG, the <clears throat> robust, the jth controllable set K tilde is the set of all admissible states for which an admissible control input exists uh, that can control robustly control uh, the states to enter the goal set XG in at most J steps. And this for all possible sequences of admissible disturbances. So this robust controllable sets provide a feasible states for the, for the control problem that we're addressing. And we propose to compute this, um, this uh, robust controllable sets offline. And there exist in the literature methods to compute these sets for, in the case of uh, linear uh, systems or linear dynamics with polytopic constraints. And once we perform this feasibility analysis, and if it is uh, yeah, successful, then we propose to solve online a constraint, constraint optimal control problem to arrive at the control sequence that will um, achieve the control objectives of, of the problem. So the details of such uh, optimization problem are available in our paper. But here we'd like to show some simulation results for the uh, test scenario that I described at the beginning of this presentation. So as I mentioned, this scenario is uh, designed to test uh, an overtaking function of the vehicle uh, under test in red. And we chose the continuous state X to be, uh, or to contain the inter-vehicle gaps, delta X1 and delta X2, and the longitudinal speeds of the test targets, V1 and V2. The input in this case, the control input, are the two longitudinal accelerations of uh, target one and target two, respectively. Uh, and we use the disturbance W to capture or to model the uh, motion of the vehicle in the test, which is controlled externally. So it's longitudinal speed and longitudinal acceleration. And this scenario uh, contains three operating modes. So the discrete state Q will take values uh, in this set, one, two, three. And we specify the goal sets and uh, input and state constraints for each of these modes in order to, uh, to describe a certain test scenario. So the goal sets will represent uh, certain values for the intervehicle gaps and the longitudinal speeds of the test targets. Okay, so uh, for the simulations, we assign a simple velocity profile to the VUT. And in these plots, we show uh, the simulation results. So this plot here shows the intervehicle gaps, uh, the values of the intervehicle gaps, delta X1 and delta X2. And this plot here shows the longitudinal velocities of the, of the vehicles. The horizontal axis shows the simulation time step. So uh, in this plot here, the red line is the velocity of the VUT, the blue line is the velocity of target one, and the green line is the velocity of target two. The vertical lines represent um, transitions between operating modes. As I mentioned, we have three operating modes in this scenario. And so in, in mode one, we see that uh, <clears throat> the VUT is driving at a constant speed, and also target one is driving at a lower constant speed, while uh, target two is accelerating. So in this uh, stay in this mode, uh, the the gap between uh, target one and the VUT is closing down, and at uh, some point um, when the gap is sufficiently small, then the VUT starts to accelerate, which indicates that it is uh, overtaking. And after some time, the uh, test target one also accelerates to catch up with the VUT and try to block the overtake. So we see that the gap uh, delta x one during mode two remains positive, which means uh, target one is uh, staying ahead of the VUT to block the overtake. And eventually, uh, once the, the scenario reaches mode three, both test targets uh, one and two decelerate to open a gap and allow for the VUT to uh, complete the overtake by cutting in in front of target one. So we see that by the end of uh, mode three, the gap is uh, uh, adequate enough for the, for the VUT to 
<clears throat> to cut in. Okay, and I would also like to show here how the sets that I have uh, been mentioning look like. So in this figure, we have the states uh, delta x1 and the v1, and the sets in gray are uh, subsets of the goal sets for the different operating modes. And the, the white, the sets in white are the robust controllable sets. So we see that the state trajectory starts in some uh, robust controllable set for the set lambda one. And it, from there, it visits the sets uh, lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three, which are subsets of the, uh, of the uh, goal sets. And uh, this can be achieved even though the motion of the VUT remains unknown a priori. And to illustrate that even uh, more clearly, in this slide, we show uh, other trajectories for all the reference, uh, uh, for other speed profiles of the VUT. So we, if we assign random speed profiles for the VUT with, within the bounds uh, assumed for the disturbance, then we see that the state trajectories that start in this case from the same initial condition, they start to deviate after some time, but they still achieve the control objective of visiting the sets lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three. So this illustrates that the control objectives can, can be uh, satisfied even though the disturbance is not known in advance. So to close this presentation, I would like to state some conclusions. So today we presented um, a framework to model uh, and, and control scenarios for validation of autonomous driving functions. We propose to analyze the feasibility of a scenario uh, by using a reachability analysis, something that we propose to, to do offline. And then online, we propose uh, to, co to solve a constrained optimal control problem to execute the, the scenario and ensure robustness to the unknown but bounded motion of the vehicle in test. And an important uh, remark here is that the framework we propose is also useful, not only to control scenarios, but also to design scenarios because it provides a sets of feasible states and feasible initial conditions. Okay, thank you for, for listening and attending this presentation. And 